In the bottom right hand side, only penny. It's the blue Holy Roman Empire player. Makes a noise for Marine Lord. And from Team Aftermath, your other finalist spawning as the Red Roos. It's Hera. It's going to be super interesting. Of course, we see the hunt begin on the side of Hera. And the attempt to deny it on the side of Marine Lord as well. Lots of sheep over here, already finding the bull. And uh, actually, I'm mission cancelling to try and get these wolves instead of uh, bringing them to the town center. Or maybe not. And well, on the other side, they are looking around for the deers. Been already killing the patch closest to him. On the right side, they're looking for others. It's a little bit of an unfortunate spawn for the Rus player. But uh, indeed he's going to very easily take control of the few wolves he has on his side and of the two patches of deers. One were very close to him, one were very close to uh, Marine Lord for the later stages. Even though, to be completely honest, like this deer patch over here, it's nothing professional scouts cannot get a hold on to. It's definitely going to be interesting. Oh, you can see a little bit of a, of a trade over here. I want to go into Hera. Um, point of view over here to check the bounties accumulated. It looks like Marine Lord is not really bringing the fight to Hera with the scout. So that's a little bit of a free bounty for the Roost player on a very complicated spot as well. Bounties are going to be insanely good for Hera, who's... Uh, already has a lot of scouts out and a lot of gold but you can see the Aachen Chapel Aachen Chapel I never understood how to pronounce this is uh, being put down by Marine Lord in a very decent spot to improve the resource, resource collection from both the lumber and this um, gold vein over here sadly it doesn't really reach to this place over here, it's a little bit too far. It's going to be still pretty dang good for early income. We have the golden gate incoming as well. Both players are very fairly standard um, aged to timing. And uh, this matchup is super, super interesting because, to be completely honest, there's really no reason for Hera to try and rush to Castle Age if against the Holy Roman Empire because he can get so much value out of the early knights compared to pretty much any other matchup while Marine Lord is really doesn't have a lot to be afraid of horse archers in the later stages of the game on Castle Age because his men at arms are going to be incredibly powerful his Lansknet I, I'm, I know that's not the right pronunciation, but you will allow me that, I hope. Um, are going to be especially good against the ranged array of units that Roost players can have put into the mix. So, super interested in seeing what is going to happen. It's going to be a stable first from Hera. As I was saying, the early knights are going to be incredibly powerful in this matchup. Most powerful here than in any other matchup in my mind and uh, I will not be surprised to see Rex being put down a mill of course to start farming from here and allow this Aegean Chapel to improve these workers by a little bit more and you can see how stable actually probably going to be uh, going to some horsemen maybe on the side of Marine Lord to try and harass instead of trying to actively defend from the early knights very interesting choice on the side of the HR player. While well, on the other side of the map, you can see the first early night being produced. And uh, overall, you don't see a, a huge shift in villagers so far. Mostly focused on food and on uh, lumber, with gold not being yet 
anything that is uh, super duper needed. Horseman in production for Marine Lord to try and at, at least uh, chase down the early lines from Hera. Right now, these scouts over here from Marine Lord are going to spot the stable and the early knight. Professional scouts being researched by Hera to take control of these deer patches. Yo, this horseman was shifting. That was something. Let's see. Hera already collecting a lot of deer carcasses and bringing them to the town center. Just strong upgrade. We see you can see a couple scouts by Marine Lord being stationed on this patch over here to stop the professional scouts from getting too much value. Hostman waiting instead for Hera to move out. Oh, a second stable as well. A little bit more hidden compared to the previous one. Marine Lord really wants to put a lot of effort to try and harass, try to raid down those uh, exposed uh, villager locations. Early knights really trying their best to get a little bit of aggression. They're not royal knights though, they will not regenerate their lost elf. You can see Hera really trying to get some value, but the horsemen are there to chase this early knight out. It's a lot of horsemen, it's five horsemen against one early knight. Marine Lord, really in a very good spot. Hera knows he cannot escape. I'm gonna try to animation cancel out of this, but uh, there's no way out of this. So these horsemen are gonna bring the fight to the early knight. Meanwhile, we can see the professional scouts are really getting a lot of value. The income per minute out of Hera is crazy good and it is, it is indeed a rush into 8 free too many horsemen to deal with on the side of Marine Lord. This early knight over here is going to be slightly surrounded trying to do his best to animation cancel his way out of here himself but he's not even going to get a single horseman and it's two dead early knights for free. Marine Lord getting a huge advantage in his early game being able to send his horsemen out and try to snipe down these scouts before they can transfer any carcasses more than they already have. Abbey of the Trinity is instead already going up. I'm pretty prone to see like a, a couple actually ranges being put down. It's not a stable so far. Maybe for more horsemen, horsemen and horse archers? I don't know. Those archers have been nerfed a lot, but it's still pretty damn good. Just an overall very versatile and strong unit. I wouldn't be too surprised to see more of them. Marine Lord is going to scout the second stable being produced and the Abbey of the Trinity going up as well. Well, the Holy Roman Empire getting to H3, that's a huge boon. It'll be very interesting to see. HRE player age up soon enough. So Ryan needs Cathedral to improve those uh, incomes from the relics. But right now the economy of Marine Lord is very very good. Hera left struggling a little bit trying to get carcasses but he really cannot. These scouts being chased around. You can see more early knights being produced. For how long are going to be early knights? Great tonight is very much available for Hera. Oh, these horsemen chasing down the scouts. But a couple early knights have been sent out, being scouted by Marine Lord Scout. And its cathedral is going up to improve the gold income of Marine Lord, knowing that this gold vein cannot be defended forever. He's already placing his villager out of that vein. Before it can get too messy. And as you can see, these early knights are not really able to get too much going on. Not much to rust, they don't want to commit into the town center. Very risky to get in there. More horsemen are being produced. They're not feathering yet. Oh, and we see another stable being sent up. We're monk with the relic out. This might be cheeky. Oh, 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 all right, he just forgot to drop down already. 
and I'm, that makes much more sense. Of course, man, an early knight fighting in the middle. Of course, the early knights are gonna bring a whole fight to these horsemen. They're gonna be much, much stronger at this stage. Marine Lord not really been producing a lot of army as of now, putting down a market to improve his gold income even more and an outpost to defend his gold vein. More horsemen being put into the mix. But Hera definitely has the army advantage as of now. A uh, couple knights being put into the mix by yeah, Marine Lord as well. Me. Holy Roman Empire knights, still pretty good. Probably not on par as age 4 knights for Hera, going to be very, very strong. But uh, it's still a very good choice. With 5 scouts, I'm not too sure if that fight is going to go in favor of Marine Lord. Who's uh, actually trying to snipe down one of the warrior monks before it gets any more relics. And relics are incredibly important for the Holy Roman Empire to establish their huge gold income. They need so much, especially with Rainid's Cathedral. You can see a prelate going out to try and get a relic. Scouts are going to rust here and there. This Body block a little bit, the army of Marine Lord trying to retreat to a better fighting spot. One of the scouts is going to be killed. And you can see both players animation cancelling out of their minds to try and get the best possible engagement between those mounted units. More early knights being sent out. Actually, yeah, still early knights being sent out by Hera. I'm actually a little bit surprised to not see the upgrade being out yet. I think Hera just kind of got the second monastery being out. Oh, that's a lot of relics being taken by Hera. Marine Lord might be in trouble actually with these many relics being in the hands of Hera. The Chinese Cathedral is not really getting a lot of value. It's 100 gold per minute. From that single ready, but you can see over here 300 and 100. Going to be shaky at the very least. And Marine Lord is trying to catch these early knights. A little bit in the open. Oh, you can see the warrior monks doing what they do best. The prelate cannot stand a chance over here. And the secret side are much definitely a possibility, especially with two of them being so close together. While the main battle, both players animation cancelling a lot, but you can see Hera being just slightly more proficient at it and winning the battle. It's kind of weird to see this much animation cancelling in this game, but the players who can do that, oh man. Hera is one of them and it turns impossible engagements into something that can work for him. Secret side being captured on the left side and on the right side. With a Hera capturing one in the middle as well, taking a whole lot of control of both relics and secret side. Hera being cosplaying the holy men in this first game of this best of five finals, taking full control of the gold income granted the religious resources, secret sides holding his control as well as four out of the five relics. Very, very good um, so far in that department. But this engagement, again, animation cancelling is a weird beast. Even early knights can bring the fight to normal knights. And right now, we can see Marine Lord struggling to bring the fight to Hera. He's actually rusting quite a little bit. His own knights. Lots of stables being put down by Marine Lord. Against the three out of Hera, with the market being put down in south, Golden Gate out. Of course, he hits the market way more late compared to his opponent. I don't know why I went that far. But uh, as you can see, Marine Lord is able to kill down one of the warrior monks and stop the secret side from granting too much gold income to Hera, as well as the other one on the left side is going to be neutralized. One of right already been actually captured by Marine Lord, who's turning this middle of the map control on its back. The military is very even so far. Both players have been losing a lot of their own units. Oh, Warrior Monk being killed over here. 
Knights against Knights. Finally, at last, Hera got the Knight upgrade. The income for Hera is still very, very good. With an earlier third age and the bounty system, we have been able to have a quite a strong economy. Lincoln Chapel really trying its best to make it on par. But now that this gold vein is finished, it's going to be tough for Marine Lord to stay even with his opponent with these many relics being out for him. These knights trying to go around. Marine Lord is undecisive about this fight. Mission counseling at its best. You can see Marine Lord using all of his Starcraft to hence you can see these men started stepping for years of his life and it all led to this battle the knights of era have been scattered by marine lord fighting fire with fire his own knights were much stronger for a much larger period of time and who needs a blacksmith am i right when you have a million stables marine lord is just absolutely taking control Wehrmacht will not win this battle against the Knights, meaning that those two sacred sites are still going to be incredibly complicated to hold for Hera. Hera still has a very strong gold income, as you've seen, losing that gold vein was a huge hit to Marine Lord's gold income. But now with sacred sites being available for the HRE player, it's going to be a whole different story. Again, it's 90 animation console over here in the middle. Those knights are very, very bruised. Over here on the right side, more knights trying to join the fight. Not really managing to get in the spot they needed to be in. See Marilot actually running away from Hera as of now. Even though the engagements were greatly in favor of the HRE player. Oh my goodness, that's so many knights, actually. Oh, this game has, uh, might have been put into a very complicated spot for Hera. I'm not too sure about this anymore. Half of the knights being sent on the left side to Ross, the other half being put in the middle to bring the fight to Hera. Meanwhile, this gold vein is going to be... His mining camp, at least, is going to be burned down. Ooh. Will it? Marine Lord just not trying to fight as of now. He's uh, putting much more effort into the sacred sites. And he's gonna take control of all three of them. Hera not been collecting lumber for a very long time. Unable to take control of this side of his own base. And now Marine Lord sending the whole might of his knights in left and right. Hera is in trouble, guys. Marine Lord approaching Sacred Victory, winning the fight in the own side of the map of the Roost player. And this is very, very rough on Hera. Marine Lord is gonna take game number one with beautiful HR replay. Wisdom going up. It's going to be so interesting to see how this will develop. This time it's Marine Lord looking for the bounties. Already getting two wolves to bring home to his town center. And while on the other side, we see Hera being able to get uh, two wolves himself and try to bring down as many deers as possible to stop the bounties from reaching too much higher. Of course, these uh, wolves have the priority as of now. And as you can see, the scene can be said for Marine Lord. Oh, that's a lot of wolves. Interesting, interesting. That's a, that's a very good bounty being denied from uh, from Marine Lord by Hera. That's three wolves, a whole patch of deers, and uh, we can see right now Hera being still. Oh, another wolf! By the infantry. Of 
course, my new lord income is going to be slightly better because you can devolve more workers on single resources and killing uh, bounties count as a passive income for the early game. You can see the Golden Gate being put down as usual, as per usual, very fast by the Rurus player being able to devolve most of his workers on food and just constantly getting gold from the bounties while you can produce scouts out of the hunting cabins. The early game from Roos, very very strong, very very easy to get those uh, resources you need and to advance to the next stage with some uh, uh, valuable structures and units such as early knights and the golden gate itself of course. You can see players contesting bounties here in the middle. In the end, Hera will be content to getting those to use Marine Lord already past the 250 uh, turning point. This wolf, this wolf is uh, an, an interesting turning point with uh, Marine Lord trying to bring it backwards. It's a lot of gold and it's going to go in favor of Hera. Hera is going to be the one to kill that wolf. We've not seen the plus 25 coming on top of the head of these scouts. Meanwhile, over here, we can see already the economic wing being built by Hera in his house of wisdom. Granting him lots of resources, income, upgrades for the early to mid game. It's interesting to see the choice of the Abbasid player in uh, terms of these uh, wings for the Azawism. The wolf actually being killed by Hera over here. Bounty is not really growing too much for my reload, probably never going to achieve the 500 uh, bounty he needs for the last year of the Rus. As you can see. Not much needed, to be completely honest. It's not the end all be all of Rus. There's a much, much more important things to do once you get to the feudal age. And uh, talking about that, we see no stable being put down yet by Marine Lord. Really wanted to get those early knights pressure that uh, Rus is so. Cue that wooden fortress being put down instead to improve the lumber income over here and to give some way to defend themselves to these workers. And you can see already this is such a strong upgrade for obviously and it's the whole reason why the economic wing is going to be the strongest wing to get for your feudal age. You get such a huge boon in income and economy so like throughout the board that is it really makes a difference military wing is also very good if you want to go for some specific units but uh in the end um trade wing can, is probably the best late game wing and military just being put in the middle with uh culture wing being able to do some pretty interesting stuff but nothing too crazy unless you have a very peculiar strategy in mind Professional scouts being researched by Marine Lord, trying to get those carcasses back home. You see both players really chilling for the time being. Abbasids do not really scale that well into late game. This moment of economy boom can be incredibly powerful, especially with those tiers being uh, denied to Marine Lord and with the workers being uh, insanely cheap. <laughs> but um, even with this economy boom, Hera will need to find some way to pressure in the middle game, at, at least in Castle Age, because like Imperial Age rules, it's nothing you want to fight as Amsid. I'm sure he knows, I'm sure he has a plan. Oh, yoink, says Marine Lord. Actually sending his scouts in and trying to bring those carcasses out of there. 
very good play. This card would also... Oh, actually, will die. Two carcasses over here being stopped. These cards are going to be very, very slow. Meaning that actually Hera can snipe them down. As you can see, it definitely will. One of the scouts of Marine Lord is going to die as well. A little bit too brave from Marine Lord to get into that position. He's gonna commit the full might of his scouts. And instead of taking the one deer carcass he was about to get, he will get none and lose two scouts in the process. Finally, some structures being put down by Marine Lord. It's going to be Rex, actually, which is interesting. But of course, Osman is something that Hera can pretty much start to do whenever he wants, especially Kamal. Kamal Riders, Kamal Archers can still be very good. And no real reason to go into stables at this stage. It's interesting to see this matchup because the Wars Archers also struggle a lot, especially against Kamal Archers. Just a little bit faster. So I'm. Uh, I'm super super curious to see what is going to be the actual play from Marine Lord. So far, looks like we're gonna have some men at arms. And we've seen in the first series of, to of today's uh, show match that Hera have been putting some quite amazing pressure with the men at arms. And then, uh, uh, Roos vs Chinese match. So Marine Lord will try to do the same against Abbasids instead. Hera still not getting to the next stage. Very close to that turning point and here it comes. It's going to be the culture wing to get upgrades. Not really looking to go into common units, no military wing. So uh, let's just take a look over here, right? You can see like the upgrades for the military wing are mostly for uh, for camels, which is something that is uh, not in the plans of Eren going instead of for the culture wing, which is incredibly good for uh, tunneling a little bit into a defensive position and um, to the like, preservation of knowledge is the most important thing to reduce the cost of those upgrades actually ranges being put down looks like that is the play of Hera and probably it's going to be with crossbow because there's uh, quite a lot of men arms being sent in to harass these villagers and it's so funny to see these bulky men with uh, armor going into villager lines just like they're zerglings because they take such little damage from town center's arrows especially once a blacksmith is done researching iron undermesh i was sure this was ex the exact timing marine lord would have had it on once this research is finished it's basically over those those men and arms are basically not taking any damage whatsoever. They cannot get to a leap yet. We need Imperial Age for that. But with Imperial Age, so will come the end of this game. If Marine Lord is able to get to Imperial Age, there's so little the opposite player can do. Rachi range is being put down. And I want to see some uh, crossbows being put down, actually by Hera. Reaching Castle Age right now, two stables being put down as well. And uh, you can see the crossbows being produced by the opposite player. All on the other side of the map, Relics already starting to become a thing. And uh, two of the sacred sites are now in control of Marine Lord. These men and arms still going ham on whatever they can find. The crossbows are gonna help a lot in this fight. And it's, it looks like finally most of the men and arms have been dealt with. You can see Hera was able to minimize his losses really. There's not really much the Marine Lord was able to take with these uh, men and arms. He's finally taking a couple villagers here and there, especially over here. But uh, 
it's not really looking super super worth as of now for Marine Lord. His resources are pretty good, his income is very good, so I'm not too afraid for his position as of now, especially with the double secret sites being captured, but it's not like he can put much more pressure so far, and opposites can get scary if left unchecked. Oh, he's man arm, so... Marine Lord really leaving, not leaving anything to the doubt, to the case. He's really on top of his aggression every single game. So, so aggressive. And see the wedge rewards being researched as well. Like, oh boy. How much ranged armor do those guys have? Yeah, that's six ranged armor. And yeah, they're gonna take 12 damage from crossbows, which is honestly just insane how tanky those guys are. All three of the sacred sides are in control of Marine Lord. He's definitely not going to go for the sacred side victory. This is definitely not the map to go for it. Too hard to control this one on the right. Getting another relic could be a very good thing for him. Especially with the amount of uh, control he has with those men at arms spread around and constantly harassing Hera down. Sierra not really taking advantage of preservation of knowledge. Such a strong upgrade, very cheap as well. He needs the gold though to pump out those crossbows. Meanwhile, more and more upgrades, finding upgrades for horsemen. Which are going to be very strong in our rusting, especially against crossbows. Crossbows don't attack very fast. Scouts over here going to try and stop this boy monk from getting that one relic, but uh, honestly, it's still a little too late. Over here in the middle, a couple crossbows going to try their best, but the horsemen are trying to intercept the crossbows before they can get. On top of the warrior monk, another relic will go in favor of Marine Lord, and so many crossbows are going to be left scattering. With Rus Cavalry having additional unit, uh, additional health due to the upgrade in the blacksmith, these horsemen really putting up a fight against the crossbows, especially with Iron Undermesh. You can see Hera tapping out insane aggression from Marine Lord, stopping the economy of Hera and utterly annihilating his army piece by piece. With a clean switch. Top left hand side is the blue English player. Makes a noise for Marine Lord with the early council hall. Currently a match point. His opponent in the red. From Team Aftermath playing as the French. He needs three win in a row. Can he do it? It's Hera. And villagers randomly mourning. That's a lot of sheep, Hera. With a double scout. Interesting. Because with a faster rate of production of villagers, Hera can really make a lot of work out of these early scout and early sheep advantage. The Marine Lord. I need to try and play a little bit more defensive. We've seen Marine Lord play this matchup from the either other point of view, and it was quite a sight with Royal Knights going ham on whatever they funded. But we've seen also an incredibly aggressive outpost rush, the network of castle, and coming from Marine Lord against the Delhi of Magic. So. Still unsure what to expect out of this match. But I definitely expect Marine Lord to be incredibly aggressive as he has been throughout this whole day of AOE 4. Feudal Age from Hera as well, 
to get those royal knights out as soon as he can. School of Cavalry and Council Hold, both incredibly good landmarks for their production capabilities. Over here to check for the aggressive maneuvers the Marine Lord is most certainly um, trying to think about. Who's Royal Knight in production? I just there's something really weird. I just don't know why a school of cavalry, when it's producing a unit, should have smoke from chimneys, but I guess those are mechanical knights. I don't know. Town center number two, the Marine Lord, with a slightly better way of defending himself. English villagers, Edin Bowes, of course, is going to help against scout harassment of any sorts. Council still not really producing Lombos with this second town center being uh, the most important thing to put down for Marine Lord having those uh, lumber and stone resources being funneled into having an earlier economical boom which is definitely needed against French as always having a second place in which you can uh, garrison your villagers and have a little bit more villager production compared to French with their innate faster villager production Wait, as you can see it's going to be super super important Arms being put down by Marine Lord in a pretty defensive position, more so than those berries are, that's for sure. Again, no Lombos in sight, not yet, while currently we can see instead Hera trying to amass the first few Royal Knights with one. Oh, actually, that's a scout. Wait, where's the other Royal Knights? Hmm. Where's he hiding? There's another scout. What? Yo. <laughs> Yo, that is crazy. There's such a weird idea from Hera. Get in the boar. Where is 2000 food? Like, it's a lot of food and it collects really, really fast. So it's really really great. But, uh, yeah, killing that is uh, a little bit tougher. And yeah, that villager is going to die. Of course, there's much more important things to micro around right now with these horsemen. Uh, horsemen? <laughs> with these horsemen chasing down that one scout, the boy is down. And Hera has uh, found himself a huge form of gathering food you can see like the income per minute is getting through the roof very quickly and now you can see a guild all incredibly fast being put down by the french player this is exactly what i was waiting for in this series hera shaking stuff a bit with his super clever strategies yeah i absolutely love this Defending this location, two racks being put down over here for men at arms, most likely, since the early castle age is going to allow that to happen much, much quicker. You can see the horsemen out of Hera trying to chase down these uh, Lombos before they can get too much damage, and they deal a lot of damage to the Lombos as well. Unfortunately, I think this horseman is also going to fall down. Those arrows just don't miss. And it's going to be a trade one per one for those two players. But with the guild all going down, Marine Lord is uh, not really going to be in the best spots. Double Rex being put down to have some uh, spears, I guess, being put into the mix. But Marine Lord is going to be quite surprised at this early age free. Another Rex going down, and you can see it's men at arms being produced by these two Rex. These Lombos suddenly going to be much less important. And they have been so far. These horsemen really 
be trading efficiently into the Lombos. That's such a clean gain so far by Hera. With Marilla really struggling to take control of any point in the map precisely due to these uh, pass switch by Marilla with the horsemen really taking the best of his Lombos and now having men at arms down on the field. And Network of Castles, not really going to be super useful against Iron Undermesh. Well, Trivitz is uh, not going to be um, upgraded yet, researched yet. But uh, of course, French do get those free melee upgrades. So those melee arms do also back a punch. And uh, you can see those melee arms just... They don't really care a lot, do they? They're just gonna take a million archers, a, a million arrows in the back and just shrug it off. Like it's nothing. Such an interesting way to play French so far. Not even chivalry has been researched. We don't see any royal knights being put into the mix. And uh, as far as the income has been, keep it on par so far. Kept on par so far by both players, especially with Marine Lord uh, having the second TC. Hera is really taking the full control of the map as far as military go. This might not look impressive to you guys, but these men at arms are soon gonna start to raid down anything they can. And the early men at arms that Hera has did not stand a chance in a one on one fight, even with Network of Castles. City Scouts trying to get a little bit of a raid onto the farms. Not really gonna manage to do that, of course. Income per minute is raising very quickly in food from a reload with tons of farms being spread around. Over here, wall being built to keep Rumbais out and to chop down even more farms and maybe take control of this trade post. But overall, that's so many men at arms. On the side of Hera. As you can see Marilla, early men at arms, much less health, much less damage due to the crazy upgrades the French immediately gives, gives you. Outside of Network of Castle range as of now, and you might not be able to animation cancel this like you can with whatever, you can do it with those as well. But this is this is such a crazy fight. I have no idea how is it possible Marine Lord bringing up the fight to the man at arms with his own early man at arms. Network of castles really look like Buster, isn't it? In the end, Era is still going to win engagements, but not by a long margin. These arrows are not gonna do much against men around. They're just gonna tickle. Now that Mangoners are out, these villagers are suddenly in a very, very best spot. Marine Lord might lose his first game of the day. Men at arms finally did early. Men at arms finally did with the men at arms from the French player over here. But this Mangonel, this Mangonel sure doesn't choke around. More men at arms being produced as well by Hera. The count is not very high. But this Mangonel, this Mangonel, if he gets one good shot, it's a whole different story. The outpost is being seriously threatened. One single Mangonel out over here. And now it's being sent forward to deal with this. Those villagers barely dodging that. And as of now, the Mangonel trying to walk a little bit more forward to deal with the villagers repairing. The outpost. Still, a couple men at arms being spread around as well as the scouts to try and deal as much damage as possible to the economy of Green Lord. Meanwhile, one single villager repairing these Mangalon back to full health. And you can see, I think it's time for these outposts to go down with more men at arms coming to the rescue. Second Mangalon being out. The Median Arms of Marine Lord being left on the left side, they're not fast units. They can get a lot of damage out of this Mangonel. And this town center is taking such a huge amount of damage itself from the Mangonel. I think I said the word Mangonel at least 50 times in 2 minutes. But I just want to highlight the huge impact these early siege engines, these early age of breed, has had for Era in the 
this game, my reload really struggling to keep up, keep up with this economy. The only thing that's less standing from a reload is his farms. Now you can see the early man at arms trying to bring the fight again to the man at arms. A beautiful surround in coming to try and get on top of the Mangalans, but another Mangalan is in the back and he's gonna try. Your man is Bully on top of the man at arms. GG gets cold. Man, Eric takes his first game of the series. Guys, basically, if Hera wins this match, we're gonna have a Delhi mirror on Mongolian Heights. <laughs> oh boy, I'm so in for that if it ever happens. But there's still another match to go, and this guy over here has not been looking stoppable very easily. I tried to play one heck of a game to get back on track in the third set. Winning the fourth one might be very complicated. Especially in the opposite matchup, he just won. With Marine Lord being so good at French himself. Again, it's going to be kind of a rush for those landmarks. As you can see. Well, income per minute in the early stages is not as important as the current resources. So we can forego that for the time being. You can see both players really trying to get to that uh, desired amount of resources to drop down to the fastest possible. What? The fastest possible H2 landmark? Why? That is... Why get this lumber over here on the side of Marine Lord? Why not get this one? Like, I really don't understand it. That's so far. And it's even a golden vein. That's really, really far. Oh, the, the pocket tears instead for Hera. This, these seeds on King of the Hill have been so weird today. Like, so, so weird. Like, what is this? At least we don't have a player with... We do have a player with... No, I actually, yeah. Both of them have two gold veins in very similar positions. Nothing too crazy. School of Cavalry going down for Marine Lord. As well as the Council Hall for Hera. Nothing to be surprised by, really. Super, super standard. I'm more curious about the choice of units, especially out of the French player. Marine Lord, really good with his Royal Knights. In the early game, double scouting south to try and get as many ships as possible. This patch of deer is a very good one, but it might be a very good place for a town center later on. It's not like Marine Lord wants the second TC boom as much as Era does. But against Royal Knights, being controlled by Marine Lord is going to be complicated. King of the Hill has fewer access points to harass into, so. We're gonna see what is going to happen. This is full cavalry, and I'll be taking a close eye on that to see if we're gonna see royal lines being produced by Marine Lord or not. Reload really getting a lot of gold as of now, something that Era is really not doing. Not really getting a stone either, though, so we're probably not going to see any early TC boom on the side of any of those two players. But uh, Marine Lord still not producing any uh, Royal Knights, trying to stop down this income from gold while Hera pops down his first few Lombos. That's another scout, an horseman instead of a royal knight. Of course, horsemen are still incredibly good in this matchup because of how strong they are versus Lombos due to the recent buffs. So it's gonna be 
very interesting to see if Marine Lord is able to pull off what Era has been pulling off in the previous game. We see an Archie range already, so it's gonna be a little bit different to what Era did in the previous game. But Hera himself, not really going for a second TC, which is it's kind of weird in this matchup. Well, meaning that he wants to be kind of aggressive. I mean, he's been producing a lot of Lombos. Lots of Lombos eventually win the fight against the production of the Rascuo Calorie and the Nachi range. It's not gonna be easy, especially once a blacksmith gets popped down. Those horsemen are going to pack a punch. And the old Marine Lord needs to do is put down the blacksmith and those plus one melee upgrades will be done immediately. I'm still a little bit flabbergasted by this, but uh, yeah, whatever. Professional scouts being completed by Marine Lord wanting to accrue as many deers as possible, getting control of these deer patches over here on the hill. Meanwhile, Marine Lord building up his horsemen archers army with the uh, Lombos. Stopping in production, as for now. Rex being put down, it's going to be spears and archers against horses and archers. Could be early men at arms. I don't think it will. I don't think Hera really has enough of a gold income to allow that to happen. But it could be. It definitely could. What is the blacksmith being? Put down by Marine Lord anytime soon, and know he needs the resources to pump out archers and horsemen. But that blacksmith might be a huge boon for him. As well as Aaron, not really doing too much with the huge income in lumber he has. Lots of food as well. Even against the professional scouts of Marine Lord, been able to drop down so many farms already. Again, uh, good control of the food income. Blue barrel completed. Very key upgrade. If it's already completed, yeah, on the side of Era. Pretty much starting immediately every time he is up. If you will age, we've seen uh, Marie Lord actually being a little bit slower on the wood barrels throughout the series. Such a key upgrade in so many scenarios, but his army, again, Marine Lord is so strong at early aggression. And he has a very good army of doing that. The raid on this lumber camp might become a thing very soon. And the archers are not really in position to deal with this quickly enough. A couple of villagers are going to die, maybe just the one. You can see those archers putting down a huge volley of arrows onto those horsemen. Actually getting almost a free trade. In the end, Marine Lord will get one villager for free, but he will lose a lot of health on one of his horsemen, and that horseman is not going to recover that health. Marine Lord trying to move around. Hera maybe caught with his pants down, but maybe not. It's going to be the archers trying to kill a couple of villagers before heading out with the horsemen defending them. Before anything weird can happen, the scout is going to try to confirm the location of the army of Marine Lord before he deals any more damage. This stable and archer range. Marine Lord doubling it down. Double stables, double archer range to put down even more horsemen and even more archers. Trying to give a whole new meaning to fiddle aggression. But the blacksmith has been put down by Hera. Probably for sealed arrows to deal with those horsemen as quick as possible. Marine Lord yet has to drop down his own blacksmith. Which again, I do think is supple. Never mind, it was just in the weirdest spot ever, but it has been put down. And that means, plus one melee, already researched, and Iron Undermesh is on the way. The upgrade advantage is pretty much almost always going to be in favor of the French. But Hera has been producing quite a lot of longbows, and with steel arrows, these longbows are gonna deal a lot of damage. Be caught in the middle of nowhere. The horsemen are eventually going to catch up onto him. Will they be able to kill it? Not for free, that's for sure. Lots of Lombos trying to take control of this right side of the hill. These seeds of the King of the Hill have been absolutely crazy. 
Like, this is such a weird spot, and it's by far the shortest rush distance I've ever seen in this map. Such a key point to control, aside from the gold veins being super important, the sacred side suddenly becomes a secondary thing because of how important is this passageway in between the two bases, especially with tons of resources being available for Marine Lord only on this side. Both players expanding in this, uh, I would say, triangle towards each other. Making this a very interesting scene to play this matchup on. Especially once forward outposts become a thing, here it comes, forward outposts from Hera. These Lombos suddenly have a lot more space to maneuver, even against the Horsemen. And uh, Iron Under Mesh has been researched, now it's time for Steel Arrow for Marine Lord himself on the other side. What do we have here? Siege Engineering! Interesting, interesting. Steel Arrow is the only other upgrade present over there. The outpost is not going up anytime soon with these horses trying to chase down the archers. The spirits were a little bit in an off position, but now the big battle can begin. The horses getting on top of the spears before they can get in position, meaning they can deal so much damage with a plus one upgrade. Such a huge battle sprouting for Marine Lord in the most optimal position to bring the fight to Hera who was just a little bit too far away with his spears. Now these archers with steel arrow gonna deal a lot of damage for Marine Lord all of a sudden. And of course Iron Under Mesh being done, these horsemen are still tanking so much damage. You can see a free armor versus range. These Lombos, even with steel arrow themselves, not gonna deal as much damage as Hera wants to. And he's spent so many resources for Siege Engineering that this game is just plain over. As is our series, we have our champion.